Hi, my name is Ozzy, and I teach you guys how to save money when building computers. So while everyone is searching far and wide for the new RTX 3000 cards and the new AMD RX 6000 cards, my mind has really only been on one thing the last three weeks. Where's the GT 1010? For those who don't know, the GT 1010 is meant to replace the severely underpowered and frankly heavily memed GT 710. Now the difference here is that the 1010 is actually meant to be able to play some games unlike its predecessor. Naturally, us more frugal minded folk took an interest in it, and so we are excited for it for quite a few different reasons. Firstly, there has been no interesting budget video card drop in almost five years, so we are hungry for something, anything. And secondly, if it's affordable, it could be a great option for budget builders. It's an interesting drop to say the least. I mean, a sub $60 light 1080p gaming video card sounds delightful. Let's just hope that scalpers don't sculpt it. Now, I don't know why someone would want to sculpt a $60 budget video card, but I also feel like the mind of a scalper is something else. But before we dive any deeper, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that teaches you new things ranging from creative topics to practical tips. And you get access to high quality lessons for an affordable price of just under 10 bucks a month. In my previous video, I made a Boku no Hero Academia modification to my gaming computer using spray paint. I'm in the process of refining my artistic skills so I can make more elegant designs and logos in the future. The class that's really helping me is Acrylic Painting, Learning the Basics by Lori Ann Gonzalez. She clearly communicates the basics of acrylic painting and the basics of proper maintenance of all of your art tools. It's very exciting for me because it gives me confidence to make cooler designs in the future, and I'm hoping by the end of this, I'll be able to do a little Bob Ross type thing on one of my computers on Twitch. If you guys are interested, then definitely check out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium membership. All right, let's see what this GT1010 can offer. So now that we know the GT1010 exists and it's worth my time, I need to get my hands on one. It's a lot harder than it sounds. Hi, hi, hi. Do you have the GT1010 in stock? The GT1010. I'm looking to purchase a GT1010. It's a new highly anticipated card from NVIDIA. No, not the RTX 3090, but I definitely can see how you can get those two confused. Why do I want one? I feel like why don't you want one is a better question to ask yourself. Yeah, I'm buying it for myself. No, I'm not being held against my will. Okay, so none in stock? So none in stock. Okay, so you guys don't sell any of those? No, sir, I don't want the RTX 3090. What do you mean just buy it? <laughs> I don't have money. Just stop being broke? Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Yeah, we're not getting the 1010. But in all seriousness, no one is actually selling the card. I did try to contact my NVIDIA rep to see if they wanted to send me a sample, but I haven't heard a response. Now, I don't blame them. I don't think they're really trying to push one of their lowest tier cards to consumers, so that's probably why they didn't respond. So we have to do the next best thing. Basically what I learned with all my engineering classes. Fake it till you make it. Simulation. So we don't have the GT1010, but we do have the GT1030 and the GTX 1050. And using these two cards, we can guesstimate the GT1010's performance. And here's how. Flops or floating point operations are a way to measure computational power. It's not a perfect way to measure gaming performance, but it's solid for relative performance of video cards in the same family. To calculate the flops of an NVIDIA card, you multiply the frequency by the number of cores and then double it. If we do this with the GTX 1053 gig I have here, we get its FP32 or floating point 32 bit performance to be 2.3 teraflops. Tech power up also confirms this. If we do the same calculations with my 1030, we get 1.1 teraflops. I ran a few benchmarks and my GTX 1050 performs about twice as fast as my GT 1030 and it also has about twice as many flops. Makes sense, right? Now here's where it gets good. Now stick with me here. 
Let's say that we wanted my 1050 to perform similarly to a 1030. Well, according to the equation, we would need to either change the number of cores or the frequency. If we underclock the car to 734 megahertz, we will theoretically have a GT 1030 performance. Okay, so some of you might be wondering, yeah, 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 math, 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 whatever. Can you actually prove it, Ozzy? Actually, yeah, we can. I ran a few benchmarks with my 1050 underclocked and the 1030, and they perform pretty closely to one another once we take an average. So we do have a proof of concept that this works. And now we're finally on to the GT1010. Now we don't have any confirmed specs, but if we use the rumored specs on Tech Power Up, we can figure out exactly how fast this card is going to be. Using the same algorithm, we'll take our GT1030, we'll underclock it to 979 megahertz, and it should theoretically perform like a GT1010. So how about the benchmarks? Let's go check it out. So I know that these are in RTX cards, but I still hope that you find these benchmarks interesting. Our test bench today is my personal rig, the Ryzen 5 2600, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM at 3000 megahertz, cast latency 16, a 500 gig M.2 SSD, and then the video cards. To start us off, we have 3D Mark Night Raid, which is a synthetic benchmark actually designed for integrated graphics and mobile products, but it's probably the only benchmark that the 1010 will properly run. It performs noticeably worse in the synthetic benchmark than the other video cards, but still provided a playable performance, which is a good sign of what's to come. Dirt 3, which is an older game, but still a lot of fun to play, worked beautifully on the 1010. It ran at ultra settings, but don't get your hopes up because it's the only game that will do so and stayed above 30 the entire time. Lowering the settings would definitely yield better numbers, so this is a solid show out. So now we're going to turn up the heat, maybe 500 degrees, and play Far Cry 5. At the lowest settings, the 1010 struggled with the in-game benchmark. We're playing at sub 20 FPS. With a 75% render scale, I'm sure we can encroach 30 frames, but depending on your history with video games and your tolerance, 19 FPS average could be considered good enough. Civilization 6, a game that has been sucking up my livelihood the last few weekends, ran pretty well on the 1010. Using the in-game graphics benchmark, we're looking at over 30 FPS, which is more than enough for a turnstile game like Civ. We can also turn down the settings to the absolute minimum and probably gain a few frames here and there. Rainbow Six Siege did pretty well too on the 1030, even though we're not getting 60 FPS, and I won't lie, you will probably be handicapped by the lower frames if you want to play competitively. It's still enough for you to actually enjoy the game without sacrificing too much performance. And lastly, GTA 5, the game that will just absolutely not die. 1010 did great at 1080p normal settings, but I think that's just a testament to how well optimized GTA 5 is nowadays. It looked fine and it played well, can't really ask for much. So if we average all five games, we see that the simulated GT 1010 isn't bad. We're looking at about a 50 FPS average and well above 30 in the minimums or 1% lows. Minus a few outliers like Far Cry 5, which technically speaking, you should know that it's probably not gonna run well on a $50 video card. That's pretty exciting. So with all that being said, there are a few conclusions that we can make from this, so let's go do that. What's up guys? The GT 1010. It's honestly not that bad. For a video card that is only meant to provide multi-monitor support for office computers, it performs pretty well. We're seeing 60 FPS in older AAA titles like Grand Theft Auto V, and we're seeing console-like performance in newer blockbuster titles like Far Cry 5. And that's at 1080p, so if we lower the resolution just a little bit, we'll see much better numbers. And it's not terrible value either. If we use a $50 launch price, which sounds reasonable, we'll see that it's offering just about a dollar a frame. And that's actually better value than the GT 1030. Combining the 1010 with the $60 Pentium CPU seems like an okay entry level computer for those who just play eSport titles. And considering how expensive so expensive rising APUs are right now, it's not a bad choice. And don't forget that this is all speculation right now. It's based on rumored specifications and an educated guess on the MSRP. It could all change, but I think this will give you a good idea of what to expect out of this card. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you loved it, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. You guys can find me on pretty much every social media platform at OzTalksHW. Um, I really only use Twitter, kind of using Instagram, 
I might reinstall TikTok. We'll see. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.